So the driest place on earth, the Saharan desert, has been flooded. And you're going to look at me with a straight face and you're going to tell me that nothing's off. This is why I stopped arguing with people a long time ago, because you can't debate and convince these people of understanding the times that we're living in. You just can't. If you think you can, it's low key pride and you're also deceiving yourself. Like if you have an ounce of critical thinking ability, you can discern that we just live in some strange times. The times that our parents and grandparents did not get to see, but we're seeing them. Folks will look at you with a straight face and tell you that nothing's going on, that this happens every 10,000 years is perfectly normal. I'm not gonna lie, bro, go put the fries in the bag, bro. At this point, you guys are hanging on by a thread of cope. And that's okay, I mean, we all cope in a sense. I just choose to put my cope or hope in Jesus Christ and you choose to put it wherever you do. But look, man, stuff is weird. The world's ending, Bible prophesied it. First thing, the Saharan Desert is not the driest place on earth. So you already started out being wrong. It took all of three seconds to Google driest place on earth. And what will come up is the Atasama Desert in Chile. That's the driest place on earth. That's the place that received the least amount of rainfall on the planet. So you already started out with an incorrect confirmation of bias that's just wrong as hell. Then you happen to mention that our grandparents didn't see it. You know why? Because every generation is always claiming that they are living in the end time. And guess what? Every generation has been wrong. From the time frame of Paul when they first proclaimed it all the way up until today, for 2,000 years, people have claimed that the end is near. The end is near. You better get your life right with Jesus because the end is near. And guess what? The end still hasn't come yet. So what in the three levels of hell are you talking about? That's why your grandparents didn't see it. Because they're the end times. There's nowhere near the times that to which you are living in, nor that anybody else has lived in. So there is no end times. Now, let's talk about the Sahara Desert. You said that every 10,000 years this happened. No, it doesn't. Guess what? The Sahara Desert received monsoon rains, especially in these three ancient lakes, every couple of decades. So not 10,000 years, but about every 20 or so years, this area, which used to be an ancient lake, which means that it used to have plenty of rainfall, probably ancient from the time frame of about 13 to 14,000 years ago, when the Sahara was green before it started becoming a desert the Sahara was green and so therefore that's why we have ancient lakes and rivers all throughout the Sahara Desert so it's not the end time plus most likely and I did see in your comments that you agreed with someone you are thinking of Ezekiel 48 is it 41 or 48? It's 41 or 48. In around verse 27. Where Ezekiel is saying, and if you read the whole chapter, which I believe it is 48, Ezekiel is talking about the fact that, uh, and it's not even Ezekiel, it's uh, somebody else. But they're talking about the fact that now that they are in the Babylonian captivity time frame and not in the uh, Assyrian captivity, but going into the, the theory in the Babylonian that God will come and rescue the children of Israel out of this situation that God will send them back to Jerusalem that God will make the desert green again and make these water spouts as a matter of fact the verse above that one in verse 17 it talks about how the children of Israel they are parched and they're searching for water guess where they're not searching for water under Babylonian captivity in the Levant in Mesopotamia they're searching, they're searching for water in Israel, not in the Saharan Desert. So your Saharan Desert has absolutely nothing to do with your Bible prophecies because more than likely the people of that time frame had very little knowledge of the Saharan Desert. In that whole description, they're talking about the land of Israel out there in the Levant. And if you've ever been there, you will find that Israel is relatively a damn desert for the most part. It got some mountains. Yes, it got some beachfront property, but for the most part, it's a damn desert where the people rely on a few rivers, but mostly on digging wells in order to get fresh water. So, this ain't got nothing to do with nothing. This is just more of the fear tactics that Christians use and try to convince you that you need to believe in their book because their book is prophesizing every damn event that happens in the world. And those people didn't even know much of the world outside of, at that time frame, 
they wouldn't have known much outside of Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greek, the Anatolia Peninsula. That's about it. That's about it. And the person that they were talking about most likely was Darius the Persian who came and released them back into their own Judaite kingdom as a puppet state of the Persian Empire and they still didn't have their own independence and then after the Persians they got conquered by the Greeks had a little bit of time on their own through the Maccabees and then right back into the Romans and then into the Ottomans flipping back and forth between the Arabs and the Europeans the Arabs and Europeans till the British owned them and then in the current state that we have today so it has absolutely nothing to do with your end times when the Saharan Desert does this every 20 or so years so in 20 years there will be some other foolishness someone else who, is, who doesn't use an ounce of critical thinking who will say that this is the end times look at the Saharan Desert it's flooding again but what do you guys think put it in the comments like share and subscribe and always remember you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable good journey good vibrations